All right, welcome back, guys. So this seems to be a super highly requested video lately, um, and it came out of nowhere. But what I'm talking about is how do I depin my XSR receivers, direct solder them right onto the flight controller, and make it a super small package. Well, it's pretty simple, really, but let's run through it. Throughout the video, I will be showing you the parts that I use, as well as some helpful tips so you don't damage anything. First up, I remove this connector, but I don't just cut the whole thing off. I actually want to leave the pins there because we will use those pins uh, with a helping hand to pull the pins out individually. This will keep us from accidentally damaging the pads or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is just try to cut the plastic all the way around without cutting the pins. And this does take some time, but as long as you just you know be careful, take your time with it. All right, the plastic part is removed, but I still have my pins here. What I do now is just bend the pins up one at a time. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, take my helping hand and grab the pins one at a time, and there's solder on the back side of the pins. So what I will do is just take my soldering iron and I will pull down on the board, and hopefully the helping hand will, uh, you know, pull the pin out. I'll just stick a thing of solder right here to keep this steady. Just like that. And when I'm doing this, I'm just kind of wiggling the board until the pin comes out. Alright, pins are gone. This part might be a little difficult if you uh, don't have steady hands. So what I do is, basically what I'm doing is uh, resting my hands on the table and I'll be working like this because it helps me steady myself. If you forget what pads go to what, you can look on the back side of the board and there's a diagram on the back side. So this pin right here is the ground, then we have power, then telemetry, then PPM, and then SBUS. I think on-screen displays have become uh, so good that I have stopped using telemetry completely, so I won't be using this middle pin. And I also run SBUS, so that means I won't be using PPM. So I will only be placing three wires on this board, but you can place as many wires as you want. If you put a little bit of solder on the end of your soldering iron, and then you can just touch the pad, and that will tend the pad. If you're placing wires side by side, uh, like this power and ground, this can become pretty difficult, but you can just put solder on the pads and then scrape your soldering iron back like that and they won't be bridged. I don't know if you saw that, but when I put the solder on, they're bridged, but if you just swipe it, now they're not bridged. Okay, now I'll grab some wire and I will highly recommend silicone wire because the silicone jacket doesn't melt like those other wires with the plastic jackets. Uh, like the wires that come with the XSR. So, and you can get silicone wire anywhere really. As far as the gauge, on most of my receivers I use 28 gauge, but for the XSR I use 30 gauge. And that's only because these pads are so close together. I also don't have uh, black, white, and red. I only have white and black. So, if you only have two colors, just take a mental note. Whenever you place this XSR back on your flight controller, don't get the power wire mixed up with anything else. Also, make sure you tin the ends of these wires, so uh, that'll make your life so much easier as you're trying to put them on. Also, after every wire, I'm uh, cleaning my soldering iron with either a wet sponge or wet napkin, something like that, because the cleaner it is, the easier it is uh, it's going to be to solder. Okay and there we have it. My next tip is going to be uh, take a multimeter and set it to the continuity mode so if you are getting uh, a short in between any of, the, any of the pads then you're going to know. So let's test these Okay, we're not getting anything, so they're not bridged. And we're not bridged here. So that means all of my wires are good. Make sure you test all of them. 
and that will keep you from frying anything once you apply power to it. For the XSR receiver, I use 18 millimeter heat shrink. So you can just do a Google search for 18 millimeter heat shrink and you should be able to find some. I'm going to cut it longer, or I'm going to cut more than I actually need because it shrinks. Alright, let's just pop it right in there. I'm going to take a heat gun, but a hair dryer might work if it gets hot enough. Hold it by the antennas. Okay, that should be good enough. You can take some scissors or whatever you have. I'm just going to use these and trim up the edges. Okay, and there we have it. I know we didn't just make it that much smaller, but the purpose of doing this is without that connector, for one we're using silicon wires, which are a lot better. They're not going to break nearly as often. But you can also bend your wires at a sharper angle and direct solder it to your flight controller. I'm not going to do it in this video. Um, you can just take a look at this and get an idea of uh, what I do. The receiver itself is mounted to the flight controller with uh, double-sided foam or double-sided sticky foam. I'll leave a link to this stuff in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, but it works great and it sticks like crazy, like this stuff does not come off. So you will not have to worry about your receiver coming off if you use it. Uh, but before I stick it to the fly controller, I take ceramic tweezers like this and I use that to solder my wires directly to the board. Once I have done that, then I stick the receiver to the board. So if this video helped you out, uh, if you could give me a like. Look in the description below, I might leave some links to uh, some stuff, parts, and other videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.